Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hmm. Oh, look at this. Google announced their analytics for their live product. And uh, right here on uh, this particular video page, we have an analytics button. So we should be seeing live analytics trickle in immediately. I mean, I can see that we have 33 likes so quickly. Thank you. In uh, less than a minute, I think. Is that a record? I don't know what the record is, really. I see all the comments uh, streaming in, including, uh, well, I guess the first comments that came in uh, a few moments more says, Electronica. Did you know that you could comment and also rate videos that had not yet gone live? It's true. We've been doing live videos on YouTube, I guess, for a few months now. Of course, I've been doing live video in general for a lot longer than a few months, years really, racking up about 150,000, I'm sorry, 150 million live viewer hours at live.perillo.com. I did get that modem installed, by the way. Uh, everything was working just fine. Very grateful that CenturyLink dropped it off, but hopefully I will not get double charged for it. Uh, they sent out one and had mailed out another saying that I had to just return the one that I hadn't opened yet. It was a little confusing, but... Uh, with any luck, I uh, will uh, not uh, have to pay too much for that particular product. So the uh, live stream at live.perillo.com is working just fine as expected. Let me go ahead and welcome everybody, uh, including those of you uh, who are not tuning in from the United States, like GigaFreak94 there on YouTube says, Hi from Germany. Uh, the Masked Master 100 says, Hello, I'm a new subscriber to you. I really like your videos. Please give me a shout out. There you go. I think that counts. Just don't care where you're tuned in from, really. Uh, Frantic Fury from Newfoundland, Canada. 2000 EJW says, Hi, Chris. This is my first time here actually live, which I suppose is better than the alternative, really. If you guys show up here dead, um, probably better things you can do in the afterlife. And uh, let's go ahead and welcome Joe Izzard, Seacom, and Bentar, Syrian75, Kurt Graham, Squirrel, Andrew Epperson. Uh, we also have JR89, Jamie Bouch, Team Wardo, Lebaniel. Name just rolls off the tongue there. Uh, Yamazaru Ninja, Tech Guru, Trebor, Poimo, Mohammed's Eye Tips, Ed, uh, or he's on his netbook today. Sometimes he's on his MacBook. At least that I know of, he's on his MacBook. Sometimes. Stacy P, who's at work. And, uh, you know, we try to make the Locker Gnome Daily Report, this live video broadcast, something that is fun and informative. So you can say this is work, this is like research. I, let's let's just pretend. Right noob, cool secret spy, Kyle K, Magic Tracks, Matt Guru fifteen, and uh, the rest. These are all the people who are joining us, courtesy of Nomies dot com. And then not to leave anybody out uh, from the general YouTube audience, like Jay Thunder, who says good evening from Cincinnati, Ohio. Indeed. Let's go ahead and uh, welcome those who are tuned in from uh, Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and send out the uh, the notification there, saying hey. We're streaming live. Actually, I'm saying going live is better than the alternative. I'm going to go ahead and tweet that, and then I'm going to go back to my uh, the web page here, the, the web page that's serving up the video that you're watching, uh, and press the like button. If you do not see a like button with a little thumbs up on it, uh, you're on the wrong page. Got to come to the videos page itself. Uh, you press the like button, and then when that loads, you press the G plus one button, that's Google plus, and you say something, and then you share it with your circles. And yes, there are people using Google+. Plus. Uh, I know many of you say, oh, no one's on Google+. Plus. That's not true. Uh, some people have said it's it's like a graveyard, a lot of bodies, just not a lot of activity. I guess that's a, somewhat of a macabre thought. You guys know how to spell macabre, right? Corn on macabre? It's kind of like, from Iowa, corn on macabre. My wife, Diana, is shaking her head in a very disapproving fashion. Which indicates to me, those aren't crickets, they're the yard people out front working on the lawn. Because I, I retired from uh, lawn gnoming years ago. Uh, the pay was horrible, and the conditions were just not to my liking, really. Got a few articles to go over today, and I'm very grateful you could join us. Uh, we've got uh, some posted to LockerGnome.com, one posted to Chris.Perillo.com, that is my blog. Uh, so, uh, what are we going to be doing? Five low-tech items... 
you should be or you should be taking camping. I was going to say the title is five low tech items you should take camping. I threw the word be in there, not to say that you should be camping, uh, because I'm of the mindset that uh, no, if there's a hotel within a mile, five miles, twenty miles, you should go there, not camping. Uh, we also have Apple Wireless Keyboard Review posted. Uh, should social networks sue spammers? 10 must-have Kindle Fire tips and tricks. How to use a USB drive to run portable applications. And top 10 beer tips. And uh, hang on just a second. Beer tips headline needs to be changed. Ah! I'm sorry, I had to take care of something there before I forgot. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Come on, Chris. Camping is fun. It is not fun. I can hear a fan buzzing. It's not. Yes, I have a fan. I, I, I have one fan. I have a fan. He's outside, right? He's, uh, he's a horrible we fan. Should we invite him? Go ahead. Invite him in. That's kind of creepy, honey. You should never invite yard people in there. They're, uh, they got grass on them and stuff. Of course, so do the dogs. We love people who work outside. We just generally, we watch from the windows going. Telling them to, they missed a spot. We stay inside, sipping our cocoa or tea. What, are, what do we drink? <laughs> Diana's already hit the, she, she's, she's ready to go. She's, she's pushing through this day. Uh... Full bore, and I can't I can't say that I blame her, really. Can't wait to get to the top 10 beer tips article that we'll be covering. Uh, and the nice thing about that is, um, just hang on. I type fast. <laughs> I was just typing in gibberish. Did you guys catch it? It's a comment. It's not really comment. Okay, we have 138 people watching now, although I'm trying to pull up the analytics, like I've been able to do in the past, and... It's not showing me the analytics for anything but the channel. And I thought I could click a little link that said, you know, analytics for the live video. I swear I could. Maybe I can't now. Not anymore. You're shaking your head now? Okay, apparently I can. <laughs> My wife knows everything. Just in case you're wondering. Tell them we're going to a party tonight. We're going, we're going to a party tonight. The Lego VIP. Well, it's not really a, it's not a party. Lego VIP status. They, they, we can bring our cups. Actually, we can pay uh, small cup prices for large cups. Plus, if we bring the large cups, we get like a dollar off or something like that. So we're going to get a, a, at least I do because I've got the VIP card. I don't know if it counts for both of us. I can say, well, she's my wife. Therefore, you know, 50%. So <laughs> off, 50% off. Too bad you can't like get 50% off for having your wife or spouse around. That'd be cool. Uh, excuse me. Bill's $20, and I very clearly have a wife. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We'll take care of that right away. Everybody would be married. There would be no divorces. All right. So, yes, I am a legal VIP. A very important Perillo. Let's go ahead and talk about five low-tech items you should take camping. Uh, and I've got a software update that I have to move out of the screen. Uh, oh, hang on. I guess I... Chris isn't here right now, and Matt, I think, was going to be here. But I'm going to take it, uh, taking the ball, and I'm running with it. Actually, I'm taking the ball, and I'm going home. Ready? Honey? I get along with Mother Nature so long as Mother Nature stays outside. I'm a great indoorsman. Uh, my wife and I both like sitting inside, uh, telling people who are outside what to do. Yes, we, we hire a neighborhood kid to mow our lawn. I mean, we do a little bit of lawn work, you know, when we have to walk outside to the car, kind of stamp on the grass. Uh, we talked about this the other day. She, she cannot, for the life of her, figure out why people go camping. And the last time I went camping, I swear to God, I almost lost a testicle because it almost froze off. Now, I don't have any empirical evidence. Not even, I'm not going to show you uh, or anything. But uh, it was cold. And here's the thing. It was like the middle of summer. It was cold. I... I I was within a mile of staying in a hotel, and yet my friend, who was a Civil War reenactor, convinced me to stay in a tent with him. 
Now, granted, I, I did get to fire a cannon in the process. Thank you, Eric, for that. Uh, but uh, I almost lost a nut. And uh, I can't say, you know, if I had a choice, going camping, staying outside, losing a nut, I, I would not choose that again. It's just not something. Even if you have no nuts, really, uh, I think you are nuts for going camping. Not a fan. Per just not, honest. The more barriers I can place in between myself and stuff that exists organically, the happier I am. That's right. I don't like bugs, spiders, creepy crawlies. Uh, and I, I do like s'mores and campfires, but you know what? I got a gas stove. Okay, I just uh, stick a little marshmallow onto the end of these things and just roast it, and I'm good. Anything you can do outside, I can do inside. I could even pee on the stove to put it out. Actually, I don't, I've never really tried that. Uh, I don't think, we're, we're not going to try that. You've never done that. Have, don't tell me if you have, hun. I'm, I'm good. I don't want to know certain things about my wife. That's one. If she's ever done that either to a stove or a campfire, really. Uh, <laughs> so, why am I talking about camping? Why? Uh, it could be uh, because we've posted an article on LockerGnome.com. As we've linked in the uh, video's description, this is really a story. Five low-tech items you should take camping. And I know we geeks are all about the high-tech stuff, but sometimes low-tech uh, is uh, just as smart. Uh, we've got a, a resident writer for LockerGnome, Matt Ryan who is a huge camping freak, although he's very disappointed because um, the, the the woods where he and his buddies would camp every year apparently burned down last year. Uh, I guess there wasn't enough pee, uh, not to make fun of forest fires or, or putting them out, really. Uh, but one of the things uh, that uh, he recommends as a, a tool or an item, a low-tech item you should take with you if you do go camping, I guess you consider it kind of a, a tool of sorts, uh, a shimaga. A shimaga? A shimaga. This is what I'm reading here. A shimaga, also known as a desert scarf, is a thin piece of material that's commonly worn to protect against the elements of the desert. It can get hot out there. <laughs> I don't think you realize it can also get really cold. Is, is that right? A shimaga? S-H-E-M-A-G-H. -H. Hey, dude, I'm not the camper here. I'm just passing along some advice from expert campsmen. Is that a word, campsman? I wonder if they recommend peeing on fires. A 550 paracord or rope, a uh, thin, remarkably strong rope. Now, I would recommend this for any geek because inev uh, inevitably there will come a time where you will need some kind of rope-like object if it's not a rope itself because you could use it to tie things together or pull someone from safety, potentially. Uh, a, a cord... Something that's strong. Uh, sham wow? What can you use a sham wow for in the forest? Uh, either way, this is something that they recommend. If you've never gone camping before, uh, taking with you a, a scarf, if only to keep your head and neck protected. Uh, not uh, following my example when I went to the Grand Canyon last week and went completely unprotected and came home very red. Uh, a rope. Uh, you never know. Even if you don't want to off Colonel Mustard in the conservatory with it. You know the reference? Clue? If you ever play Clue? Another recommendation? Fishing line or hooks. Hey, you may not want to go fishing. But again, this could come in very handy in a situation where you have to be very resourceful. You have to turn yourself into MacGyver. Uh, you, f you find yourself uh, needing to tie something, but the rope that you have is too strong uh, or too thick to use. Fishing line is very strong. In fact, I use fishing line around the house all the time. Not to fish, uh, but to hang objects because I know it's very strong. It's not going to snap. It's very, uh, a very good gauge uh, fishing line. A walking stick. There's a, you know, you could look cool with a walking stick, but it could also help if you find yourself uh, needing to hike. Have you ever hiked? I've hiked before. I have done that, so that's about as much as I have done uh, in recent years. It's kind of fun, uh, you know, on, on, on rather cool days to hike. Uh, I'm always staring at my GPS. Okay, so maybe I'm playing Angry Birds. I'm just, just looking at some kind of electronic device instead of enjoying the great outdoors. But you know what? That's what they made television for to make television shows to show you what happens outside. So uh, we've got a handful of tools for all of you would-be outdoorsmen who have never gone outdoors before or going out for the first time. 
uh, we've got more information on the uh, story as posted on LockerGnome.com. It's in the video's description. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on. How to use a USB drive to run portable applications. All right. Are you ready, honey? I uh, walk through security systems all the time. In fact, I even went through that one, what do they call it, the, the back scatter thing that scans your body and shows like all your fat wrinkles and your private parts to like the people that are watching the screen. They always ask me to like stay in there. And, like they keep running it on me. I don't know why. I don't have anything important on me. Uh, and in fact, I, I got busted because I had uh, some uh, lip balm in my pocket, and they thought it was an incendiary device. Yes, I was going to take down a plane with this! Sometimes uh, they asked me to remove my keys from uh, the uh, my carry-on, uh, and the reason why is because I have a Swiss Army USB drive attached to it. No, not a knife. Not a knife. It's just a USB drive. And I have that on me because I never know when I'm going to need something. Copy data back and forth, run an application without putting the application on the hard drive. It is pretty simple. So uh, we've outlined in our guide, a story of sorts, how to use a USB drive to run portable applications. Uh, you know, these things, they're a dime a dozen. In many cases, a dime would be too much for these uh, USB drives. Uh, you could run uh, browsers on USB drives on uh, and then plug them into let's say a, a PC uh, that you you know you might see at some kind of uh, you know cafe uh, or, or you know a random shop where you want to get online but you don't want to use their web browser you want to use your own uh, quite simply plug in the USB drive and sometimes uh, the rest kind of just takes care of itself if you've installed the right portable applications on that USB drive and if you want to know a good place to start now we've outlined many places uh, but one of the places that we've recommended in the article, as we link below in the video's description, is portableapps.com. Portableapps.com. Again, the value of doing this is that you can take these apps with you wherever you go, uh, even over to a friend's house. You don't want to use your friend's computer. You just you need to use the computer if you need to use, uh, you know, let's say get access to the internet or run a particular program. But you don't have to use the applications installed on their computer. They can all run off of not... Uh, Lip balm. Although that would be an interesting uh, USB device. Uh, lip balm slash USB drive. That'd be neat. Uh, I've got a USB drive there. I've got a USB drive there. I've got a drive there. I've got, dude, I collect. God, how many of these things do I. I even have a USB drive that's still in the package. It's crazy. Why haven't I opened this yet? Because I haven't needed to use it. I get them all the freaking time. So, uh, if you have not yet considered uh, having one of these USB drives on you at all times, uh, think twice, because you never know when one of these portable apps could bail you out of a situation that you might be able to use those apps to bail you out of from which to buy where for. Neat. Girls, I once showed up for a girls' night dinner with a USB hanging from a lanyard around my neck. Wow, Jamie. That's that takes the cake. I think she just got know me the day for that one. Sorry, I, I pre announced it. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that away. Did you want to? No, she's been know me the day. She has been know me the day. She, but dude, she wore a USB drive around. That that deserves know me the day. Twice. Uh, twice. I'm impressed. Double. I would never do that. Now she gets two stars. Now she gets two stars, and Diana's keeping track. You can trade in all your stars for a USB drive. I think is what we're gonna. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the Kindle, shall we? You ready to talk about the Kindle? I don't have one on me because it's downstairs. I still have an Amazon Kindle Fire. Um, pretty happy, or at least happy enough with it, if only because uh, it gives me a chance to um, do things that I couldn't do without a Kindle Fire. The tablet computing space is heating up, and Amazon pretty much rules the roost as far as low-cost uh, tablet experiences are concerned. Uh, you know, for $200, you really can't complain too much when things don't work as well as, say, devices that run in the $500 and beyond range. So we know there are many, many Kindle Fire users out there. You may be one of them. You may know of one of them. 
cool. Uh, you might be interested in the story we just posted on Locker Gnome. Our 10 must-have Kindle Fire ticks. Ticks. <laughs> no, not that there are any kind of blood-sucking things on the Kindle Fire that I know of. Tips. Uh, so uh, we've got some tips for you. Uh, one is with the Silk browser, uh, the way that Amazon has crafted the uh, default web browser experience on the Kindle Fire is that uh, things can run pretty quickly, but when things don't seem to be running very smoothly, at least as far as the data being pulled down is concerned, and remember, it's, it's still a web browser, uh, you can go into the menu in settings and then clear all cookie data, clear cache, and clear history if you don't want to be tracked. So remember, when you pick up someone else's Kindle Fire, you can browse their history if you want, uh, or if you do something on there that you don't want anybody to see, you go in there and you clear the data, okay? Clear the data. Two, you can transfer files using send to Kindle. So uh, if, to locate your Kindle email address, you go to settings, more, and then my account. I think I have like five different Kindles registered, not all of them, Kindle Fire, certainly. Uh, but if you wanna go, to amazon.com slash manage your Kindle. Uh, you can choose your sent from and then uh, your address to the approved personal document email list and then send documents to your Kindle, like PDFs. Now there's a 50 megabyte file size restriction, but the nice thing about this is you can be on your desktop and you can see something, oh, an ebook someone sends you. Uh, you just drag the PDF into an email, send it off to uh, your, uh, uh, your Kindle account and then it'll show up on your Kindle kind of nice. So consider that you can transfer files uh, by using send to Kindle. Not just PDFs, of course, but other file types as well. Quick Office. Now that comes pre-installed with Amazon's Kindle Fire. Uh, you could use the built-in file manager and the search assist feature uh, to help you find any open documents you saved on your Kindle from Google Docs. Uh, so it, if that doesn't help you, you could also use an application called ES File Explorer. It is free, by the way. Uh, so uh, you can create documents on the go with the Kindle Fire. So it's not exactly like a typical, uh, or I should say traditional Windows computer, uh, but you know, it's, it's enough to get the job done sometimes. You know, if you just need to key in a few words, uh, send off an email, browse a web page, create a document, uh, you could do it. Even if you want to create like a presentation, you could do that on Kindle Fire. Spreadsheet, Kindle Fire can help you. And Quick Office comes pre-installed if you didn't know it. Uh, keyboard quick numbers, uh, there's a trick you can use uh, in, in, if you want to insert a number. To insert the number, hold down any one of the keys on the top row of the keyboard. The number above it will appear in orange and then will be automatically added to the document. So you can essentially press and hold. So like the Q, if you press and hold, a one will appear above it. Isn't that kind of neat? I, I don't, did you guys even know you could do that? Uh, it's kind of nice. You, you were using an alternative keyboard on uh, the Kindle Fire. You may consider going back to the default one. Parental controls are there for you to use if that Kindle Fire happens to exist inside a, a house where you don't want people to buy things willy-nilly. I'm lucky enough that uh, I, I don't have to worry about that right now. At some point, I will, uh, possibly when uh, Wicket starts using uh, the Kindle Fire. Uh, not that dogs are their demographic, but at some point in the future, we, we plan on having kids, don't we, hon? How many? How many? <laughs> Two? Three? Yeah. Three? Two or three. Two or three. I'd hesitate to be that third one. <laughs> the or. You were an or. If, if my third child is watching this video... You are a possibility. Where is that link going to take me? Here's another tip for you. Uh, if you want to avoid the problem on your Kindle, long press on a link and the window will appear with several options. So don't just tap the link to go there. Press and hold. You'll see the thing. Open, open a new tab, bookmark link, save link, copy link, URL, or share link. There, just tap and hold. Little tip. You can also block pop-ups or disable the blocking of pop-ups. My recommendation is that you block them outright. You can find more information in menu if you click the menu and then go to settings uh, and then choose the always block pop-up window settings. You can change the default search engine if you like to. Uh, you could use Yahoo or Bing or of course, like most of you are gonna do, stick with Google. You can change the web font as well, either large or huge if you have uh, po uh, possible issues in reading text on smaller screens and don't wanna hold the, the Kindle Fire too closely. Uh, my mom would probably have to do that. She could enlarge the text automatically. Uh, you could also use a USB cable to transfer files back and forth. Uh, something that I don't think 
I, I really do so much anymore. I transfer files, but I don't use much cabling. Everything I do is wireless, seemingly. Everything lives in the cloud. Why do I need to track things physically? Kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, so uh, thank you for, uh, you know, adding any tips that you might have, if you happen to have any other tips for Kindle Fire owners. Uh, and I know there are many of you out there. It's pretty much the leading Android tablet today, even though a lot of people say, it's not a real Android tablet. Well, um, it runs a version of Android, and it runs Android apps and allows you to install Android apps. So in my book, it's an Android tablet. Yay. All right. Should social networks sue spammers? Ready, honey? Is this a photo of you? I saw it last night. And you click the link that was sent to you, only to be passed along to some web page with a million pop-up windows, and suddenly, before you know it, your entire computer is compromised. Uh, or, let's just say, someone randomly tweets you or messages you and says something that makes absolutely zero sense. It could be a, a spammer. Yeah, there are a lot of spammers out there. Millions and millions of spammers and billions of spam accounts. Here's a question for you as posed by Matt Ryan here on LockerGnome.com. The story, should social networks sue spammers? Now, if you want to read more uh, and you want to see Matt's perspective, you're more than welcome to click the link. That won't take you to a spam page. It's LockerGnome.com. Everything we post there is safe. Um, my answer to this question is yes. Uh, I think that these networks should go after the spammers. Whether they're using YouTube to spam, Twitter, Google+, doesn't matter. Yes, I think these networks should be able to sue them. I think uh, you should uh, pinch them, uh, take, take, them uh, take them down a few notches. Uh, they're only doing it because there's usually some kind of financial gain. So as long as you remove that financial gain or if the restrictions imposed are too heavy, that they don't even want to uh, think about uh, going that route, then the, the job will at least, well, I would hope, have made a dent in the amount of junk that gets thrown out there. And yes, I am a victim of YouTube spam, even tag spam. People tag Locker Gnome and Perillo and videos all the time in the hopes that they're going to raise uh, uh, themselves and their videos up in the rankings. I didn't realize that people were searching for Perillo and Locker Gnome, but apparently they are, and that's cool for me. I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful for that, for the videos that I do. Uh, but these spammy tactics uh, usually go unchecked. I mean, you, just, you swat a spammer, you block a spammer, you report a spammer. Uh, it's like, you know, cutting off, uh, you know, a head of a hydra, you know, you know, three more will spring up in its place. Uh, so, uh, and I don't know if that's an exact mathematical calculation in terms of hydras, not that I've, you know, done my research on them. Uh, but you, you, you can't expect that they're just going to keep doing this if we don't do something to remove the financial incentives. Uh, and certainly taking them to, to court, suing them, could go a long way. I think people would be uh, very careful about what they did. You know, I've been accused, say, of spamming. So this, this, here's how I get accused of spamming. Uh, people start following me on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, and they, they say, hey, they're signing up for my stuff, and then I send them stuff. You're spamming me! Ah! I'm like, no, I'm not. You, you signed up for it, you, you person. Uh, a spammer is someone who sends you stuff that you didn't ask for, okay? And uh, put stuff out there that is just generally junk. And, and there's so much of it on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Google+. Should those social networks be allowed to sue those spammers? I say yes. What say you? All right, uh, let's go ahead and Apple, key, wireless, Apple wireless keyboard review. And uh, I'm going to pull one. I'm going to pull one out of my pocket. It's not in my pocket. It's my drawer, technically speaking. Here, Danny. What's the best keyboard you've ever used in your entire life? Go ahead. Don't be shy. Share it. Up until a few years ago, my favorite keyboard was a Microsoft Internet Pro. That's what they called it. I don't know. They threw a whole bunch of keywords into the title. It was it was awesome. I, I loved the uh, the action on the keys. It was very responsive. I was able to key in pretty quickly. Uh, and then I you know started to use one of the worst keyboards 
on the planet. The classic Apple wireless keyboard. I, I don't like this. Why do I keep this thing around? Because it controls the Mac Mini that's running the live stream at live.perillo.com. And it's the only thing that sits atop uh, where I, I have it placed. Uh, one of the worst keyboards I've ever used is this Apple wireless keyboard. I'm not the only one who, uh, who didn't like it. But it still works. I just don't use it all that often, so it doesn't annoy me as much. It just seems that my typing gets slower on the keyboard. So uh, my favorite keyboard also happens to be uh, the keyboard that was recently reviewed on LockerGnome.com, as we've linked in the video's description, the Apple wireless keyboard review. So, yeah, wrap your head around that. Uh, my, uh, and I, uh, pull it out again. I put it underneath. My favorite keyboard ever my least favorite keyboard ever both made by apple yeah check it out so uh i happen to like this wireless keyboard for a lot of reasons uh one i've never been able to type quicker two it works with windows uh three uh it seems to do well with battery life four it's responsive five i have other apple products and the keyboard layout is pretty much exactly the same on every single one of them including uh all of my uh macbooks uh so i use this keyboard my fingers are uh you know uh, i guess accustomed to the placement of the keys on any device that i use and many of them happen to be uh, apple products whether i'm running mac os 10 or windows uh and so i don't have to retrain my fingers to hit certain spots for keys and that that type of uh you know muscle memory can come in handy when it comes to uh, typing speed. So um, people have asked, you know, what's your recommendation? My recommendation is this one. Even if you're not a Mac user, even if you don't have an Apple computer, it is still compatible with Windows. Not exactly sure I'm, uh, if Linux will work, but I'm, if you know anything about Linux, you can combine, write your own drivers, Linux people, and you'll figure it out, I'm sure. So uh, this, is, this has made me a better typer, and I've made the recommendation a million times over. Plus, I could pair this Bluetooth keyboard with my smartphone or my iPad if I wanted to. It works just fine. Did you know that you could you could pair your Apple wireless keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard uh, to uh, your iPad? Did you know that? Yeah, see that? I'm not the only one. Ben Tyre happens to agree. And you don't have to be a fanboy to appreciate really good hardware. And I do. I appreciate really good hardware. I, again, for years I used Microsoft's products until better products came along. And that's really, uh, you know, how it's how it's been for me. Now, if you know of another keyboard that we should be looking at, an amazing keyboard, I mean, just amazing. I mean, let's see here. We had that, the Optimus Maximus, which is a nice keyboard, but it the responsiveness of the keys were just so slow. So it was cool, but it just didn't work all that well. Uh, each, each key has a little screen on it, an OLED screen. It's pretty neat, actually. Uh, I did a review on that one a long time ago, uh, but if you're looking for a keyboard for everyday use, I would say the Apple Wireless Keyboard would get my vote. I'm not alone. We've posted our full review on the Locker Gnome article. If you have any other keyboard or, let's say, general computing peripherals to recommend, you want us to take a look, uh, let us know. Ow! Oh. I apparently have an update on my... Uh, Parallels has got an update. Hang on, I gotta. Well, I don't have to. Oh. There we go. Had to wait for the dang thing to key in there. I I had to. Stall, I'm stalling updates. Stalling. It downloaded it apparently in the background. It's quite alright. Um. My I, the, the mad, that's a Mighty Mouse and uh, the the skin for the Mighty Mouse I'm not like thrilled with. If I really want to use it on a regular basis, I'll take the skin off. Uh, I have the same issue with oh I, I guess I took that one off there, so it's like this one. That's why that other one was black. It has a skin on it. Skin on my mouse. Uh, so let's talk about one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's five, honey. Mm -hmm. I think we've got one on my blog. Beer tips. You gonna make a red? You gonna go make a red draw? I'll, I'll stall for time. You want to? Yeah, or we... Yeah. They wait? Yeah. Okay, they can wait. My foot fell asleep. Your, her foot fell asleep. She's going to make me... Because I, I want to talk about the red draw. Okay. It's really good. Go. Uh, our top ten beer tips. I, I assume we have ten.
I, I don't actually I don't know if this is a top 10. I use the MS Wireless Keyboard 3000 V2 on my iMac and my PC. Keeping the same keyboard makes it easier to switch back and forth. You skin I did skin a mouse. Uh, you prefer tea? Mountain Dew? I guess. See if it works. Yeah, fast typing. Very, very, very fast typing. Uh, are you guys there? We're, it's not exactly top, a top f 10. Not to disappoint. I may have screwed something up. I think it's, I think it's just top five. Uh... And I'm going to wait. I'm stalling because Diana's making something called a red draw. It's like, it's beer with uh, tomato juice. Although we found the perfect combination is actually a, a V8 product because it adds a little bit of salt. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Do you guys have a favorite beer? Do y'all have a favorite beer? No favorite beers? Really? What's your favorite... Diana's being her normal self, drinking. Nah, that's not true. Um, San Pellegrino or Perrier. Yeah, but that's not beer. Punk IPA. Yeah, my favorite beer is no beer. No, well, it's a good beer, really. Uh, Chris Napper says Blue Moon. None, I'm 15. Good for you! Not for being 15. Bad for you for being 15. Good for you for not drinking when you're 15. That's the thing I just don't understand. Uh, you know, you're 18, you can die for your country, but you gotta wait until you're 21 to buy a lottery ticket, to, uh, to gamble, to uh, drink, to uh, do anything, really. I don't understand why they do that. Why don't you just bring it all to 18? Wouldn't that be nice for everybody? I think if you're from uh, another country... Uh, you can drink, uh, like, wine. It's normal to drink wine. You know, underage. Whatever under is. Blue Moon is great. Dominion Law. I'm getting some good uh, suggestions here from the people watching the YouTube video. Uh, Veltins says Vista Gamer 92. Perlenbacher, good chemical-free German beer, says Rockets. Uh, Blue Moon says I, Adam Trailer 77. Dominion Lager says AJ Fishman. Australia has the best beers. I would beg to differ. Sorry, bum think 121. Uh, Perillo Light is my favorite beer, says JJ Gould 21. Mm -hmm. Bavaria, says Harold 78. Guinness, says DJ Frenchie 1980. You know, I, I, I've had better, uh, uh, better darker beers than Guinness, honestly. Used to be a fan of, um, let's see here, Pete's Wicked Ale was probably my favorite go-to bottled beer. I'll drink about anything out of the tap. My favorite microbrew was uh, a... Oh, it was a pale ale. Oh, God, what was it? Rollick. Uh, a pyramid ale. It was a seasonal. Rollick. And they stopped making it. Ugh. But it was the best. Oh, my God. It was so hearty and smooth. Oh, so delicious. And if, if you don't think beer is delicious, you're drinking the wrong beer. Uh, there are all sorts of flavors uh, of beer. Uh, Cronenberg, Dead Man's Ale, good for a dark beer. Scotland is 18 to buy beer, but you can have it in your house at 16, says Robert Wildman. Rolling Rock, oh, come on, the angry apple nerd. Really? Out of all the beers in the world, you go with Rolling Rock. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Well, Diana apparently agrees with you. <laughs> All right, thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. You ready? Foster's Australian for beer. I remember there was a Simpsons episode where she said, I'll take some coffee. She says, we have beer. She said, coffee. And he goes, beer. Because <laughs> they, had, they had no co coffee. Are <laughs> right, you ready, honey? Uh, give me a second. Let me pull up the top five beer tips. If you 
don't like beer, and you are legally able to drink it, uh, you may have had the wrong beer. Or maybe you had it served incorrectly. Uh, I do like certain beers, and I don't like other beers. So I find it difficult to accept when people say, I don't like beer. Have you tried it all? How do you know? There's so many beers in the world. Over the years, I've tried some rather amazing beers. My favorite of all time was Rollick uh, from Pyramid Ale. Uh, it was a seasonal, and I think it was a pale ale, but it was so, so smooth. Oh my, it was just, it went down so smoothly. It was so amazing. Uh, generally speaking, I don't drink a lot of beer, uh, if only because I don't exercise enough to drink so much beer without developing what they would call a beer gut. Uh, I do, however, want to say that I'm a huge fan of this type of beer. You might be wondering what type of beer this is. Uh, it is a beer in a tumbler that says Chris Perillo, Chief Nomi. Uh, it's actually not just a beer. It's a beer with V8, also known as a red draw, at least in certain parts of Texas. And sometimes you would put beer with tomato juice. That's not as good as if you put it with a low sodium V8. That's my opinion. Uh, it tastes so good. Oh, it's so... If you don't like beer, uh, try it with a V8 and tell me what you think. Mm. Now, if you don't like beer and V8, you're probably not going to want to try it. Uh, oh, that is so good. Did you have a sip? Yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> My wife, Diana, is a, a master at uh, the Red Draw. Oh, mm. So why are you watching this video? You might ask yourself. No, it's not to watch me drink this, oh, best red draw you've ever made in your entire life. It's so good. It's to point you to an article uh, that we've recently created on my blog, chris.perlo.com. Our top five beer tips. Uh, take a look. A few beverages have stood the test of time, but beer has been around longer than you, longer than a lot of us. Beer has been around pretty much since the dawn of civilization. How could you not like that? In many cases, beer is safer to drink than a lot of the drinking water that's in the world. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through this video. Take a look at the link if you want the full outline and description. In fact, this morning on Facebook and Twitter and Google+, Plus, I, uh, I posted a status update. to beer. What are your tips for drinking it, enjoying it, etc.? And so many of you came forth with suggestions, including... The first suggestion, choose the right beer. You can't just come out and say, I hate beer. Because there's so many flavors to be explored. So many. Uh, choose the right one. In fact, one of the suggestions, as, uh, as posted by Lars Fosdal, he advises if you don't like it, drink something else. He continued, I've also taken a low-carb beer for barbecues, as it doesn't give you that bloated feel. Jason Cox adds, if you're not fond of the bitter flavor, avoid things like pale ales, which are heavy on the hops. So if you had a beer, ah, it's too bitter. Don't go with the pale ale, which they may be serving you. Uh, it's just a suggestion for you. Uh, and you don't have to drink the beverage alone. And that's, that's a key. Uh, if I was sitting here drinking this Red Draw on my own, I wouldn't enjoy it as much as I am drinking it with you. You're kind of like a drinking bunny. This is a positive environment. We like learning. We like sharing advice. And I'm here with my wife who made this Red Draw. Did you make one for yourself? No. I put some in the fridge. Anywhere. Oh. Oh. Ah! Oh! Ho-ho! You have no idea. I know so many people are going to go out there. They're going to Clamato or, 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 uh, or tomato juice. They're going to try it. If you've not tried it, I had no idea it could taste this good. A uh, pouring. And I learned this when I worked at uh, uh, Pizza Hut years ago when I was a kid. Uh, I, I, I was old enough to serve the beer, not an old, old enough to drink it. Mm. But I learned that uh, the way that I would pour it out of the tap is I'd, I'd tilt the glass to the side and to give it a good head on the top, a little foam at the top. Uh, I, I, I gave perfect head of the in the beer for the... I can rewind this, can't I? We can de you can delete that in editing, can't you? Uh, <clears throat> I think I think you whatever you put in here is is strong enough for me not to drink the rest of it for now. The foam at the top of the glass, it's, it's known as the head. Like a bathroom is known as a head. The top of the fo foam is pouring can be important. 
Uh, temperature is also very important. Uh, you know, you've got to keep that in mind too. If, if I mean, some people like warm beer. I don't know why. Uh, but if it's not at a, a good temperature for the type of beer that you've brewed, um, it's not going to taste optimal to your taste buds. Keeping ice in a cooler is one thing, but uh, did you know that beer actually gets colder when that ice has mostly melted? Did you know that? Little tip for all of you who uh, like beer or want to like beer. And then, of course, the big thing, you know, light beer uh, versus dark beer. Uh, there is absolutely a difference. We've got tips and tricks to help you better enjoy beer uh, in your life, or maybe you have a friend who enjoys beer, um, or would like to enjoy beer. I would like to enjoy beer, I just don't know how. We've collected a set of tips and tricks for you, and link them conveniently in this video's description. It's called the head. <laughs> I don't like that uh, my beer be too cold, because it gives me a brain freeze. Mm. Uh, I, see, I'd rather have beer that is too cold. I would like to be served optimally for whatever beer it is. But I would, I would, I hate warm beer. Ugh. I like it. You like warm beer? My brother would always say I was crazy. Okay, I'm gonna have to side with your brother on this one. <laughs> oh. It's good. Ugh. You're right. V8 is. Some people didn't know what V8 is. Oh, you guys didn't know? I'm sorry. It's a uh. vegetable juice. Ugh. Delicious. Mm. There's a difference between cellar temperature and warm. Sick boy. Take it off him. No more beer for the... It's not beer. It's a red draw. Yeah. Good. The cars. Oh. Oh, that's so good. That is so cooling. Uh -huh. Oh, it, it really... I, I think my temperature's dropped a couple of degrees. I feel cooler now. Not because the, the air, air conditioner is not on, is it? No, I didn't think so. Let's go ahead and share. Oh, wait. Before I give the link of the day, uh, <clears throat> could you have a frozen beer snow cone? Asks the snare one. Have you ever had a... No. Interesting idea. No. Chris, what is the best beer? That's like saying, what is the best computer? No one knows. Taste is relative. You're supposed to drink Guinness room temperature. See? Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. So I, I, I prefer colder beers, but... If you're supposed to drink certain beers room temperature, then that's how I'd rather drink them. Yeah. Warm, though, is a little... Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, DJ Frenchy 1980 is asking for your red draw recipe. Maybe depending on the popularity of this, we'll have to do a video on how to make a red draw. Yeah, and some people like the ratio difference. The, yes, the ratio can be different. Uh, so maybe if, the, if that video does well, we'll find a beer sponsor. Yes. And do some uh, red draw videos mmm I think we can pull that off a beer sponsor could life get any better than that okay maybe a wine sponsor I wine every day and no one sponsors me for that and Red Draw can make cheap beer taste good mm -hmm. Red Draw can make cheap beer taste good you heard it here first <laughs> from the king of cheap me uh, back link of the day glorin26.wordpress.com uh, he linked back to Locker Gnome. Should new cars be gadget friendly? Uh, that was a post of our smart car uh, four vision concept. So uh, thank you. And we link back to you if you link back to us. Uh, you just send me an email, chris at perillo.com, with the place where you link back to a Locker Gnome article on your blog, your website, your URL. You let us know and we'll link back to you. We'll send you the link love. That's right. And you'll get clicks and people will click and they'll visit and they'll look and they'll say, what's this? It's the backlink of the day. It came out in Locker Gnome's email newsletter, which everybody subscribed to. It was posted to chris.perlo.com. It was also posted in the video's description for the live video, the Locker Gnome Daily Report, which we're doing right now. We have a backlink every day. Check it out. What'd you put in this thing? <laughs> I haven't lost it. I found it. <laughs> And I guarantee anybody could uh, drink me under the table. <clears throat> anybody. Now, I've, I've, I, I never go under the table, though. That's kind of... <laughs> but I think we've done it all. Everything that we needed to do today. 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for sharing the links to the articles. Uh, thank you for liking this video, all 123 of you, even though 164 of you were watching. I don't know what the other... See, I'm trying to calculate 30 million. Other 40 people or so were doing, really. But if you liked the video, thank you for liking the video. Thank you for liking all the videos that we do. We appreciate the support. It's like you encourage us to do more, you know. Uh, someone thinks that I'm drunk on V8. That is a possibility. Some people like milk and Pepsi mixed. It makes a funky gray liquid. Ew. 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 Should we try it? We should not try it. <laughs> you could try it. You can try it all you want. Try it all night long for all I care. I'm not a fan of milk. Ugh. Milk in anything. Ew. I'm almost finished here. Okay, so I'll do, I'll, guide, I'll, I'll do you this favor. I will stay here, streaming live, until I'm finished with the red draw. I promise. No, it's very good. Mm. I'm going to be finished soon. Mm. The salty in the, uh, the, the V8 really is the thing that really pops, you know, brings it all here. Oh, oh wait! It's beer salt. That's beer salt. And I'll wait till the bottom. <coughs> <laughs> that was pungent. <laughs> I know. Potent. In a nice cube. <laughs> Bum think one twenty one is asking if I want a wine sponsor. Why not? Could my voice have gone up any higher? <laughs> Well, before I go out of your octave range, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. If you want more information? Stop by LockerGnome.com. My email address: ChrisAppariella.com. Crazy brother, you have some sweet.